How did our forefathers emerge from Africa and colonize the world, wiping out less advanced humans along the way, like some ancient manifest destiny? Scientists believe that a branch of humanity left Africa around 800,000 years ago and split, after a few hundred thousand years, into Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans. For reasons that are still being debated, the Neanderthals evolved to the west of the Himalayan mountains and the Denisovans to the east and south, while modern humans remained in their African homeland. Human genetic research has advanced dramatically over the last two decades. We have generated massive amounts of data by sequencing thousands of genomes from both prehistoric and modern humans. However, combining the genomes from various databases and developing algorithms to deal with the massive amounts of data has proven to be a significant challenge. In a new study from the David Reich Labs at Harvard University titled A Unified Genealogy of Modern and Ancient Genomes, scientists developed a new method to accomplish this, using tree sequences to accommodate millions of genome sequences. The new tree's branches contain a staggering 231 million ancestral lineages. Its foundation is a network of roots represented by eight ancient, highly detailed human genome sequences, with thousands of smaller snippets used to confirm their deep historical significance. The scientists also included three Neanderthal genomes in the tree, as well as one Denisovan genome, which previous researchers discovered to have slightly more primitive genes than modern humans. Because regions of the human genome are only inherited from one of our parents, the ancestry of each genetic region can be traced back in time, much like a family tree, to the ancestor who first exhibited the specific genetic variation. In layman's terms, the comprehensive tree depicts how people all over the world are connected. Essentially, we are reconstructing our ancestors' genomes and using them to form a vast network of relationships. We can then estimate when and where these ancestors lived, stated lead author Dr. Anthony Wilder Wones, of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Harvard University. The research team concentrated on DNA segments that vary from person to person. They identified 6,412,717 gene variants and attempted to determine when and where each one originated. To accomplish this, they examined an additional 3,589 samples of ancient DNA that were not suitable for inclusion in the tree but did shed light on when the variants appeared. The study found that variants that appeared before 72,000 years ago were most common in Northeast Africa, as were the oldest 100 variants, which originated in what is now Sudan. The oldest variants are about 2 million years old, so they predate our species, which appeared around 300,000 years ago. Instead, the variants go back to the earliest members of our genus, Homo erectus. The simplest interpretation is that humanity evolved in that region, but subsequent migrations are likely to have influenced the data. The researchers combined data on modern and ancient human genomes from eight different databases, totaling 3,609 genome sequences from 215 populations. Using computer algorithms, they were able to predict where common ancestors must exist in these individuals' evolutionary trees in order to explain the observed patterns of genetic variation. The resulting network contained nearly 27 million ancestors, and after incorporating location data from these sample genomes, they could be used to estimate where the predicted common ancestors had lived over time. According to the tree, early humans originated in Sudan approximately 2 million years ago and spread to the Middle East 840,000 years ago and into southern Eurasia by 280,000 years ago. Then, by 140,000 years ago, modern genomes covered most of Eurasia and arrived in Papua New Guinea and covered most of Eurasia. The study found that the ancestors of Native Americans were a separate lineage by 56,000 years ago, and modern humans had colonized all of the Old World, an intriguing idea. Researchers discovered that the modern-day Papua region has the most remaining genes from the Denisovan people. Papua New Guinea also shows significant signs of Neanderthal DNA. Charles Darwin preferred natural selection as the primary mechanism of evolution in his 1859 book On the Origin of Species. These processes include genetic drift 
as recently separated populations diverged as a result of random processes, a founder effect as remote areas were colonized by small pioneer groups and various sexual or cultural preferences. Darwin also astutely noted one of the more wonderful results of sexual selection in his book Descent of Man. Nonetheless, being a fossilized human ancestor is challenging. People are still debating your exact appearance thousands of years after your death. There's also no logical reason why ancient humans who lived in a variety of environments one million years ago, including in Africa, would have the same skin color and hair type. They would have been just as diverse as we are now, if not more. There were likely populations with dark skin, blue eyes and blonde hair similar to the Melanesians. Some of these populations went extinct, so we shouldn't assume that humans before modern times did not have blue eyes or blonde hair. We also shouldn't assume that blonde hair and light-coloured eyes is strictly a European trait, as Melanesians also have these traits. According to French anthropologist Ludovic Slimak, we are the puppet masters of these creatures from the past, which we have pieced together to create a sort of Frankenstein creature. Indeed, we have transformed them into lifeless dolls designed in our own image. Scientific guesses about what ancient humans looked like have remained consistent for more than a century. For example, the northernmost Neanderthals in Central Asia and Europe likely had less melanin in their skin, resulting in lighter pigmentation than other ancient people who lived closer to the equator. Lighter pigmentation makes sense for them, just as it does for modern humans. Contrary to popular belief, Neanderthals exhibited variation in genes related to hair, skin and eye pigmentation. Furthermore, some of that variation has been passed down to modern human populations, with different variants being more or less common in different populations. Interestingly, more of the introgressed variants are associated with lighter pigmentation than darker pigmentation. According to another peer-reviewed study from the University of Pennsylvania titled Loti Associated with Skin Pigmentation Identified in African Populations, published in the prestigious journal Science, Skin color variation appears to have existed before Homo sapiens emerged, as some of the genetic variants discovered, coding for both light and dark pigmentation, were between 300,000 and 1 million years old. In fact, seven genetic variants linked to lighter pigmentation appeared at least 270,000 years ago, and four over 900,000 years ago. Given that our species, Homo sapiens, did not evolve until approximately 300,000 years ago, the discovery implies that the genes responsible for lighter skin tones were present in the genetic material of our hominin ancestors, hundreds of thousands of years before the first modern humans stomped the earth. The most intriguing finding is that some ancestral light skin alleles are shared by early modern humans and archaic hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, implying a shared common ancestor for this trait prior to the split of these three hominin lineages. This is important because it shows that both light and dark-skinned humans have coexisted on the planet for one million years, and this is not a recent phenomena. Indeed, human pigmentation has varied greatly for at least the last 900,000 years. So concludes the study of genetic variants linked to skin pigmentation in people from various regions. According to the latest findings, some dark skin tones evolved relatively recently from paler genetic variants. The combined data identified eight sites in the human genome that are particularly associated with skin pigmentation. Together, these sites account for approximately 30% of the variation in skin pigmentation observed among the volunteers. For each of the eight sites of variation, there was a genetic variant associated with paler skin and one associated with darker skin. According to the study, seven of the paler skin variants evolved at least 270,000 years ago, and four of these appeared over 900,000 years ago. However, the most shocking discovery was that some of these variations first appeared around 500,000 years ago implying that modern humans and Neanderthals' ancestors may have had skin tones similar to the pygmy or sand people of eastern Africa who have relatively light skin tones. People with the darkest skin are more likely to have two mutations that reduce the expression of this gene, which means that dark skin is actually a derived trait from lighter skin tones. 
This makes sense because when you shave a chimpanzee, it will have light skin. In reality, for both light and dark skin, the majority of the identified variants have a very long history. They most likely first appeared in hominids such as Homo erectus, where the genes coexisted peacefully for tens of thousands of years, long before our own species evolved. Homo erectus lived in a wide range of latitudes, so there is no reason to believe that over a million years before diverging into different species, they did not develop different skin tones. The findings show that light and dark alleles have been segregating in the hominin lineage for hundreds of thousands of years. Furthermore, the ancestral allele is linked to light pigmentation in roughly half of the predicted causal genes. Neanderthal and Denisovan genome sequences, which diverged from modern human sequences 800-4000 years ago, also contain the ancestral allele. The researchers discovered ancient variants in the light-skinned San people in two interconnected genes called HERC2 and OCA2, which are associated with light skin, eyes and hair in Europeans, but originated in Africa. According to the study, the variants first appeared around a million years ago and then spread to Europe and Asia. According to the data analysis, the most recent common ancestor for the derived allele lived between 996,000 and 1.2 million years ago. Many of the gene variants that cause light skin in Europe can also be found in Africa. According to one frequently cited report, blue eye color in humans may be caused by a perfectly associated founder mutation in a regulatory element located within the HERC2 gene inhibits OCA2 expression. This mutation for light-colored eyes most likely originated in the Caucasus region around 42,000 years ago. When a genetic trait becomes common in a population, and when it first evolved, takes many, many generations. This gene was prevalent in the Caucasus region at the time and spread westward into Europe around 20,000 years ago and became common around 10,000 years ago. Surprisingly, Evidence suggests that up to 16 different genes may be responsible for human eye color, but the main two genes associated with eye color variation are OCA2 and HERC2, both of which are located on chromosome 15. Today, we know of over a hundred variants linked to pigmentation variation in living humans. Fewer than 10 of these are known for Neanderthals, and this limited current knowledge may not reflect the full picture of Neanderthals. Nonetheless, two Neanderthal-introduced haplotypes involved in pigmentation are now very common in European populations, indicating a history of natural selection. One of these haplotypes included the gene OCA2, which is known to have several variants in living people that affect skin and eye pigmentation. It is most commonly cited as a genetic link to blue versus brown eyes. This Neanderthal haplotype which spans OCA2, is an excellent example of how difficult it can be to determine the functional significance of introgressed haplotypes. This haplotype contains no coding variants, so if there are functional differences between this haplotype and others, they must be due to gene regulation rather than genetic structure. The Neanderthal haplotype contains dozens of gene variants, but only one variant, known as RS1408799, was identified in previous pigmentation studies. This variant has a statistically significant but small effect on eye and hair color in European ancestry samples. But because it does not strongly predict eye or skin pigmentation, it is unclear whether another linked variant is responsible for the association with pigmentation. Thus, the findings support the hypothesis of recurrent positive selection acting on multiple variants of OCA2, some of which evolved in modern humans and others inherited through hybridization with Neanderthals. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to contemplate the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, remain curious and stay questioning. Please subscribe, share and check out our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.